Well, these were a strange couple of days. I stopped making the video that I've been working on for the past couple of weeks, so I can talk about an amazing manga that I found recently, because I wanted to talk about it as soon as possible. And now, I stopped working on that video to talk about this trash pile. It's called The Night King Who Returned With A God, and it's hands down the worst manhwa I've ever read, and I have read some foul ones. Some of them start off great, then turn to shit later. Others are bad from the get-go, but at least they try their best to give you a good first impression. But this, this is the first time I have ever struggled to finish the first chapter of a Korean manhwa. I had to make so many excuses. I had to cope so hard. Maybe they'll do this. Maybe they'll do that. Maybe there's a twist coming. But no, it's just shit. I will only be talking about the first chapter because that's all I read. Plus a bit of chapter 2. Trust me, I've tried. You guys know that I usually read at least 10 chapters of a manga before forming an opinion on it. That is unless it's really really good, or in this case, really really bad. Because I don't care if this manhwa goes on to become the citizen's cane of manhwa. If this is how you present your first chapter, how you introduce your protagonist, then I have no interest in what else you have to offer. The story feels like the ramblings of an edgy teen, the protagonist is awful, and the art is... Well, let's talk about the art, then we'll move on to the story. The art style is very good. Or is it? You see, shortly after they released the first chapter in May of this year, people were quick to point out that the art looks very... AI. And I agree, it does. But that's not all. They were also accused of tracing the Mushko Tensei anime, which if you look at these panels together, it is very hard to not see the similarities. For me, it was this single panel that made me pause. It's not a direct rip of the anime, but if you told me it was, I would believe you, because it looks like Rudy looking out of the window. They even have the same clothes, just a different color. Also, they just straight up copy paste Groot. And it's like, how can you mess this up? It's a Trent. It's just a tree with arms and legs. The studio behind the manhwa later came out and said that they did in fact use AI, but only for the finishing touches to the art. Me personally, I don't mind it if the artists used AI for the finishing touches with shading and lighting. But this is just what they say, and whether you believe them or not, that is up to you. The studio then re-released the first six chapters with a few alterations to the art, and banished Groot to the Shadow Realm. Now if this happened somewhere in the later chapters where they're like under time constraints and were tempted to take a few shortcuts in there, it would still be wrong, but I would at least understand why they did it. But this is the goddamn first chapter! What were they thinking? Now for the story. The protagonist gets isekai from an orphan who overworked himself to death into the son of a noble in a fantasy world. He grows up and starts training to become a paladin. After years of training and wandering and fighting, he was acknowledged by the goddess and became a holy knight. And after more years of fighting and war, he became a king, followed by even more wars against orcs, demons and cults. Then eventually, some goober king sacrificed his life along with 3 million of his citizens. Don't ask me how he managed to achieve that. All for a ritual to summon the Lord of Chaos, who opened up portals to the demon world and began the apocalypse. Most of humanity was annihilated, except for the protagonist and his army who were getting ready for their last stand against billions of monsters. So they fought and fought until everyone died except for the protagonist, who kept on fighting for 200 years, until he finally managed to destroy the last demon gate. Then he kept fighting until he eradicated all the demons. That's when he meets some modern day earthlings who came through a portal, and where the story turns into another solo leveling gates and dungeons clone. And the cherry on top is this game panel notification. <laughs> Aw, oh, guys, you didn't have to do that. I already think this manhwa is garbage. You don't have to convince me even more. You may think that I just did a quick summary of the events of the first chapter, but you would be wrong. That is exactly how they are portrayed in the chapter. It's all just one big slideshow of this guy's life, and it's as boring as it seems. At no point do they even try to make you invested in, well, anything at all. The world was destroyed, humanity was annihilated, the protagonist fought non-stop for years alone against monsters and won, and I feel nothing. They tried to cram in 10 chapters worth of content into one. If anything, I think I did a better job summarizing it. I delivered the same events, with the same emotional impact which is zero, and with less words. <laughs> also, I will never forgive them for making this part. Cringe is a sin. Now for the main reason why I dislike this manhwa. The protagonist. 
By the end of the first chapter, he is extremely overpowered. He doesn't seem to age, and he managed to single-handedly kill billions of monsters. That's right, billions. Told you this was written by a 14-year-old. Either way, you will need to try very hard to make a compelling story with a protagonist like that. But him being OP doesn't make him a bad protagonist. Here's what makes him a bad protagonist. I don't know about you guys, but when a character says shit like, I killed the women and the children and felt refreshed, it's time to pull the fucking brakes. Like, chill out, Attila. I remember reading this part like, I massacred the orcs including the women and the children. Oh, this guy's a war criminal. I felt so refreshed. Nope, he's just a maniac. But still, I thought maybe they're just doing this to build him up as a cruel character. Then later have him realize the errors of his way and do his character development that way. But no, it gets worse from here. He goes on to say shit like this, become a slaver, and later on use his slaves in the final battle as human shields. Now just think for a second how fucked up this is. It's humanity's last stand versus certain doom. They are the only humans left. And he has slaves. So, instead of giving them weapons to help him battle, or at least defend themselves, he used them as meat shields. That is repulsive. That is not how you write a genocidal protagonist. At least when you look at characters like Eren, who did what he did, he knows how bad it is, is eaten by guilt, and says he's going to hell for it. Or another example is Dwight, who massacred men, women, and children, but acknowledged how horrible that is, and decides to bear those sins and keep walking towards his goal to become the ultimate evil and save humanity. When characters exhibit guilt or remorse, it shows that they still have a moral compass, even if they are going against it. Nobody likes to follow the story of a protagonist with no morals. And one of the biggest examples of how to not morally alienate your audience is the Joker movie. It does an excellent job of portraying the villain as the victim. For the entirety of the movie, all we see is the main character getting abused by his environment again and again. And when he finally fights back, you can't help but root for him. Despite the fact that if you look at what he did from an objective standpoint, it is evil. And because this manhwa didn't bother making you invested in the protagonist and his motives, there is only the objective standpoint left, and that's not a good spotlight for a protagonist. And even if you make the argument that those were not humans, they were orcs, monsters, therefore it's good to kill them, well, let's take a look at Goblin Slayer. He kills goblin kids in the first episode, but the Goblin Slayer manga makes it its job to keep hammering in the point that goblins are irredeemable evil. They are monsters that rely on raping women to sustain their species. They have no civilization or communities, and even if one of them becomes smart enough to organize them, they are even worse than before. The manga repeatedly tells you that no matter what, you should never show them mercy, because nothing good will come of it. Which is something that this manhwa doesn't bother doing. They're like, here are orcs, and the MC just committed genocide. Writing a morally gray or an evil protagonist is an art form. It either works, or it doesn't work at all. There is no middle ground. A well-crafted morally grey character will prompt introspection and engagement. But here, the lack of internal conflict hinders any emotional connection to the narrative, and detaches the readers from the hero's journey. But it's not like the journey itself seemed to have anything interesting to it, because I can already predict it. He's gonna go to Earth, then become a hunter, work towards bringing people to the region of his goddess, he'll join some sort of hunter association, or make one of his own, he'll fight monsters, and will probably fight some other hunters that are bad hunters, who try something shady. Then he'll also fight another association or a government that try to manipulate him or control him. He'll do that all while the other side characters will be like, oh wow, he's so strong. And way later on, he'll meet the guy who summoned the Lord of Chaos, and he will be like some sort of powerful demon or something like that. I wonder how much did I get right. But oh well, my words are not gospel. If you like this manhwa, then that's fine. Just don't go telling people it's gold, because it's not. This is what gold looks like. Do look forward to the next video, because I will be talking about an underrated fantasy manga that could very well be my number one manga of the year. It is very good. I will try to release the video as fast as possible. Thank you for watching, take care of yourself. And bye bye.